and good morning to Willow Hill and everyone joining us for worship today. We are so blessed you've decided to worship with us. We have a wonderful service planned, which includes Pastor Nicole's message, We Are Willow Hill, which concludes the sermon series, This Is Us. Throughout the worship service, you'll see little video clips from members who have submitted videos letting us know how Willow Hill has impacted them, what they love about Willow Hill, and how Willow Hill has deepened their relationship with Christ. So we hope you enjoy those video clips. Additionally, following the conclusion of the worship service, you'll get to see a little promo video about our upcoming sermon series, Unqualified. Now, if you're new to Willow Hill, we encourage you to fill out the digital connection card linked in the video's description or comment new below the video. We would love to get to know you. If you'd like to get to know Willow Hill a little bit more, you can check out our website, willowhill.org, or find us on social media through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'll go ahead and link our website as well as our social media handles in the video's description. Throughout the course of the worship service, feel free to like, comment, and let us know what you think. We would love to hear from you. Now, please join in singing this morning's hymn. Please join me in prayer this morning. Dear God, thank you for the advancement of technology to be able to gather remotely during this time of social distancing. Forgive us for not remembering to thank you for all the blessings you have made possible for us. We pray for the safety of those facing the aftermath of the hurricanes in the Gulf Coast. Be with those of us that have had to bury loved ones and ask for your healing of our minds, bodies, and spirits during these uncertain times. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer where you're at. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power, the glory, the kingdom forever. Amen. Hi, friends. It is time for our children's small talk today. What do you think of my fabulous crown? You see, when I heard that Pastor Nicole was going to be talking about the kingdom of God, I thought, how appropriate. I had to go to our costume bin and get a crown to wear. Because obviously, we're talking about a kingdom. We're going to talk about a king with a crown and a fabulous robe sitting on a throne. Well... Now that I think about it, maybe that's not what she's going to talk about with the kingdom of God. Maybe a crown is not what it's all about. 
You see, in our Bible story today, we hear again about the disciples spending time with Jesus. Right after Jesus was resurrected, Jesus spent time with the disciples for about 40 days before he went back to heaven. And during that time, Jesus was talking to the disciples and teaching them all about the kingdom of God, about God's love, and teaching them how to help people, to feed people who are hungry, to help people who are hurting, and to, to share the story of God's love that was for everyone. But when the disciples heard that Jesus was about ready to leave them, they asked him about the kingdom. And they asked Jesus when and where he was going to put this kingdom of God, where he was going to restore the kingdom of God. I wonder if the disciples thought that Jesus was going to do a kingdom where he would wear a crown and sit on a throne and be like what they knew of kings, to rule a certain place and land with his rules. Well, you know, I think they learned after time that wearing a crown was really not what Jesus was talking about. Jesus wasn't talking about the kind of king who sits on a throne and tells everyone, you have to do this and you have to do that. I think Jesus was talking to the disciples about the way God created the world to be with people loving each other and taking care of each other and helping each other and feeding each other. And what Jesus told the disciples was that he wasn't going to be here to restore a kingdom in a certain place, but that after he left, God was going to share the power through the Holy Spirit with all the disciples so that they could go out into the world all over in the world to all different people to share God's love, to gather people together, to help them grow in what they knew about Jesus and about God, and to help them go out and share that love too. So Jesus told the disciples they were the ones that were going to restore the kingdom of God. The disciples were going to do what they could to bring God's kingdom, establish God's kingdom here on earth, wherever they went. We've been learning in the past few weeks how the disciples started going out and gathering people and helping them grow and going all over to share the good news. And that is what we have learned was called the beginning of the church. And now we're all a part of the church. We may not have been disciples, but we are the church right now. And here at Willow Hill Church, we believe it is part of our responsibility, our job, to help continue to grow God's kingdom here on earth, wherever it is we are right now. We believe that at Willow Hill, we still get to gather together in, in ways on Zoom or sometimes in person and eventually back together in church and worshiping. And that we get to grow together, to grow closer to God, to grow closer to each other, and to grow in our faith, and to help others grow. And then we at Willow Hill get to go into the world and share God's love wherever we go. And by doing that, we are helping to grow God's kingdom. Because you see, God's kingdom can start with little things. Every little thing that we do that's sharing God's love with someone by being kind, by feeding someone who's hungry, by helping someone who's hurting in some way, by bringing hope to someone, helping cheer someone up who's feeling really sad, feeling like life isn't very good for them. We can help tell people about God's love and that it's for everyone. And we can help share that love by bringing joy to people, by taking care of people, by forgiving people, and, and being peaceful with people, and just loving others and being kind. When we do any of those small acts, living the way we know Jesus taught us to live, 
then each of us is a part in helping to grow God's kingdom and help make God's kingdom a bigger part of this world. Imagine how wonderful our world can be as we keep making the world a bigger and bigger part of God's kingdom. And you can be a part of that. Let's fold our hands and say our sentence prayer. Dear God, thank you for Willow Hill Church. Please help us live like Jesus by loving others as we help grow your kingdom. Amen. We are so excited to be starting our outdoor worship services weekly beginning September 6th at 9 a.m. The offertory portion of the worship service was recorded earlier in the week. Instead of reiterating the local impact of missions and ministries supported through Will Hill, we felt it was important to adjust our focus onto a more time-sensitive situation. Hurricane Laura made landfall with devastating effects for coastal towns due to the wind, rain, and flooding. The United Methodist Committee on Relief is already in the process of deploying their disaster response and recovery team experts to help in training and supporting local personnel in the recovery efforts. Financial gifts to UMCOR go directly to sharing God's love by helping those most in need. Dealing with crisis upon crisis, it is unfathomable, the situation those affected by the hurricane are facing. But the work of UMCOR helps to bring hope to rebuild the community and maybe help build the kingdom too. Giving information for both Willow Hill and UMCOR are in the video's description. So thank you to all of you who continue to give so generously of the gifts with which God has blessed you.
This morning's reading is Acts chapter 1, verses 3 through 9, from the Common English Bible. This is written by Luke during the imprisonment of Paul in Rome. After his suffering, he showed them that he was alive with many convincing proofs. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days, speaking to them about God's kingdom. While they were eating together, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised. He said, this is what you heard from me. John baptized with water, but only a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. As a result, those who had gathered together asked Jesus, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel now? He re Jesus replied, It isn't for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has set by his own authority. Rather, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all of Judea, in Samaria, in to the end of the earth. After Jesus said these things, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. This is the reading of, uh, from the Holy Bible for the people of God. <laughs> well, good morning, Willow Hill. Would you join me in prayer this morning? Oh God, meet us where we are this morning. Come and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Unstop our ears that we might hear your still, small voice. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Well, have you ever noticed different seasons of your life might have a reoccurring theme, something that just keeps coming up and up and up in your life? This theme might come to you at the most random of times or from the most surprising of places. This has happened to me several times throughout my life. Sometimes it comes in the form of a God-centered truth that I need to learn or I need to focus on. Sometimes it is a theme that is preparing me for something that is to come. One time I had a particularly difficult season in my life and the reoccurring theme that I heard from God was this. This is hard, but God is here. This is hard, but God is here. And I heard that from all different kinds of sources, from family and, and from friends and even from the Holy Spirit. Another time, I had a particular period in my life where the story of Moses and the Exodus was brought up in just weird and, and seemingly random ways. The cool thing about that was that I ended up taking a trip to Egypt, but that's a story for another day. Most recently, this reoccurring theme that I have noticed in my life is this, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God has continually been brought to my mind and and brought to my attention in recent months, kind of just over and over again. Now, I thought that this was maybe a season of thinking about the kingdom as I was ending ministry at my previous church, and I even preached my last sermon on the kingdom of God. But for whatever reason, that did not end this theme in my life. It has kept emerging, which is kind of signaling to me that there was more that God wants to do with this theme in my life. So I spent some time as I was working on this sermon uh, thinking about, well, how long has that kingdom theme been brought to my mind? And I realized this, the kingdom of God theme has been coming up since last October. And that's significant because it was right at the same time that I found out I would be reappointed to a different church. Now, I didn't know that that church was going to be Willow Hill, but I did know that I was going to a new place. But here's the thing. <laughs> since I've been contemplating this, since this kingdom of God theme hasn't left me just yet, 
I've been praying about it and, and seeking God's wisdom about it. And I believe that God has been using these past 10 months to prepare my heart and my mind for what he wants to do here at Willow Hill, to see how Willow Hill and the kingdom of God would intertwine. In my short time here, I've heard over and over again from you that you all believe that we are called to serve our community more, to connect with our community more, to share Jesus with our community more. And that is kingdom work, friends. That is kingdom work. So deep in my soul, I feel that this theme is maybe not just a theme for me, but maybe this is a theme for Willow Hill, one that we need to embrace together, to embrace this kingdom work that God is calling us to do. I can feel that. Maybe you can feel that. And I'm excited to see how God will use this theme in us. Now, because this theme has been kind of reverberating through my soul for the past 10 months, whenever I read a passage of scripture that mentions the kingdom of God, uh, that passage just kind of jumps out at me. It kind of gets my spidey senses tingling, if you will. So as I was reading through the book of Acts, preparing for this sermon series, This Is Us, that we have been in, the passage of scripture that we read this morning jumped out at me. It attracted my attention. The kingdom of God, there it is again. And so I want us to explore this passage of scripture today. It opens up with Jesus, who after his death and resurrection has come back to continue to mentor and to pour into his disciples. And he spends 40 days with them, 40 days with the disciples, teaching them about the kingdom of God. Now, at the end of these 40 days, the disciples ask Jesus a question, one that had been on their minds that must have been burning, one of those burning questions they needed to ask. And you know what that question was? It wasn't, what should we do next, Jesus? It wasn't, how long are you going to be with us, Jesus? It wasn't even, Jesus, what was death like and resurrection? What was that like? Nope. They asked him this. Jesus, when are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? And at that point, I think Jesus probably needed to take a deep breath to avoid saying something that he didn't want to say. Really? They're concerned about the kingdom of Israel? after all that time that they had just spent learning about the kingdom of God, they missed it. They, they just missed it. It went right over their heads. They were supposed to be, they were focusing on what they thought the Messiah was supposed to be, what the Messiah was supposed to do to have Israel be the greatest nation in the world, that no one would be able to challenge them, and that after centuries of being occupied and dominated by other countries, that Israel would finally reign supreme. That's what they were hoping for. But they missed Jesus' point. That it wasn't about the kingdom of Israel at all. It never was. It was always about the kingdom of God. So Jesus corrects them and he points them to the truth. That it isn't about the kingdom of Israel it's about something much bigger than that. And now the disciples would be in charge of bringing that work, carrying that work forward. And with that, Jesus promises to send them the Holy Spirit to aid them in that work that they are to do. And then he ascends into heaven and is gone. So the disciples are left to carry on Jesus' work, the work of the kingdom of God. That is what the rest of the book of Acts is all about. The stories that we have been reading uh, through this in this sermon series in previous weeks were all about the disciples discovering the work of the kingdom that they had been charged to do. And we get to see all of it, right? We get to see the birth of the church and how that church buds and blossoms and grows. And the cool thing about this charge that was given by Jesus to the disciples is that it is the same charge 
that has been passed down to us. The same charge. Jesus told his disciples that they were to be his witness to the ends of the earth. But Jesus wasn't just speaking to those uh, 11 disciples right there. He was speaking to all of the disciples. All that would have this charge to go and share the good news. The charge that has been passed down from generation to generation all the way down to you and me. You know, the book of Acts serves as the legacy of the disciples' work in the world. And we can see the amazing things that they did in the name of Jesus. The healings, the miracles, the lives that were changed because the good news was preached. And in all of this, the kingdom of God was brought here to earth. Because that's the mystery of the kingdom of God. It isn't about some far off place. It isn't about a place where we go when we die. No, it's, it's our job to bring the kingdom of God here, now. That is the job of all disciples, to help the kingdom of God break into our world, to bring heaven to earth. Now, I was practicing this sermon a little bit ago, and Corbin, my son, was there listening. And when I got to this point in the sermon, he said, how do we do that, Mom? <laughs> Such a great question, right? How do we help the kingdom of God break into our world? Well, this happens whenever we share the good news with others. It happens when we give a lunch to a child who is hungry. It happens when we feed the homeless in our communities. It happens when we share what we have with others who are in need. When we tell others about Jesus' love. We see the legacy of the disciples in Acts, how they work to bring the kingdom of God here to earth. And that leaves me wondering, what do we want our legacy at Willow Hill to be? Centuries from now, how do we want to be remembered? You know, legacies hardly ever just come about it's something that we have to start working towards now. We have to plant the seeds now that we want to see harvested in the future. What will our legacy be? How will future generations remember the ministry that we are doing right now? Now, the last few weeks, we've been thinking through our mission statement here at Willow Hill, gather, grow, and go. Might these three words lead us to a legacy that we want to leave? I think these three words might do just that, to guide us to do the work that will help us to plant those seeds. And that, if we're lucky, we might even get to see some of those seeds bud and blossom and grow. Now, this is going to take some intentional work, if we want to fully realize uh, the work that God has called us to do, then we need to fully realize who we were created to be. And we need to pray and we need to seek God's wisdom and guidance. And we need to be open to new ways of gathering and growing and going. And we'll have to spend some time asking and evaluating this question. Who are we? Who are we? Over the past few weeks, I've had the opportunity to sit down with many of you to hear your thoughts on Willow Hill. And you've answered my questions about what do you love about Willow Hill and what do you think we need to do next and what dreams do you have for our church? And you know what? It has been astounding to me how I have heard themes resounding over and over through these conversations. I have loved hearing you answer these questions so much so that I thought it would be fun for us to celebrate what it is you all love about our church. So without further ado, I invite you to hear what you all have to say about Willow Hill. Let's take a look. What, about, what I like about Willow Hill is the Chosen Church because I like the crafts because I like to be creative. 
I like the snack. But even in the midst of a pandemic, we can continue to meet and have a sense of community through Bible study and church uh, via Zoom or sitting outside under the tree wearing our mask. We love how welcoming Willow Hill is and the deep sense of community that you feel when you're there. We also love that there are so many ways for our kids to get involved in the church. I like VBS, like the crafts, science, and games. I love Knights of North Castle of BBS. Willow Hill are the people. I look forward every Sunday to seeing everyone, interacting with everyone, and I, I very much feel the love that uh, comes from all the folks at Willow Hill. Church is Children's Choir. The Arts and Crafts at Children's Church and Liturgical Dance. Is the Christian education. Through Bible study, Sunday school, and especially through the Disciple Bible series, I've learned so much about my journey on my faith as it continues to grow. Through the Bible study, I've learned where I came from, why I'm here, and where I'm going. And for that, I am so appreciative. It is the sense of family. Uh, we have met some great friends, and we also have some folks who have adopted my kids, like their own uh, kids and grandkids, and it, I really appreciate all of that. I like singing in the choir. And I love seeing everybody in church and VBS. If you want to start a new church like Willow Hill or to have a successful church event, be sure to follow the law of cookies. The law of cookies is simply that if those who are coming are asked to bring along a dozen cookies or so, they're more likely to show up and brag about it when they get there. It's called the law of cookies. It's the joys that you experience being part of the congregation. And that joy can be expressed in the fun that we have together. You know, super soaker water guns in worship or uh, a turkey drop powered by a drone or doing the wave. How exciting is that? But sometimes that joy is also expressed as we are confronted by difficult moments in our lives, or we find ourselves leaning into challenging moments that are confronting our um, vision and mission for Willow Hill. And in those moments, it's as we remind each other that God's grace and love is expressed to us new every morning, that we find that joy renewed and empowering us as Christians. Yeah, I love our joy. There are two basic things that I love about Willow Hill. The first would be the way that the people care for one another, both inside and outside the church. Um, whether it's calling on someone who is sick and to check up on them, um, or the prison ministry, the feeding of the hungry in so many different ways, and doing home repairs, to name just a few, of those caring actions that are so important to our Christian life. The second thing that I love is the way that so many take advantage of the learning opportunities that we offer. Uh, this would include the many small groups that we, that we offer, such as disciple or table talk, or even off-site visits to the uh, places of worship of other religions and to learn more about them. There's this and so many other ways is, are, are, are the reasons why I love Willow Hill. It is a joy to think about great things at Willow Hill. I can think of uh, good things such as children dancing at worship services and brightening up our time together. I can think of the generosity, the extravagant generosity of people in so many mission projects like the Gene Project or the Undy Sunday Project. God bless you. Who are we? We are Willow Hill. And we are all the things mentioned in that video and more. We are here to bring the kingdom of God to earth. In all we do, we must strive to build God's kingdom in our little corner of the world. In our gathering, in our growing, in our going, we must strive to bring the kingdom of God here to earth because 
Our world is in such desperate need, such desperate need. When we look out into the world, we can see how much this world needs the love of God. Our world is shrouded in darkness. It is suffocating from injustices and hatred and greed. And it is our job, Willow Hill, to bring the kingdom here, a breath of fresh air for all who encounter the love of God through his kingdom. You know, God is desperate to use us to make a difference in the world. He is desperate to use us to share his goodness and his love and his mercy with others. And just as he called the disciples to do his work in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of the earth, he is calling us to do his work in Germantown Hills and Metamora in East Peoria, in Illinois, in America, and to the ends of the earth. That is how he is calling us. It is our charge to build his kingdom here. Now there is a moving song by Rend Collective called Build Your Kingdom Here. And one line says, we are the church. We are the hope on earth. And every time I hear that line, I think, yes, that's it. That is it. We are the hope on earth because we are doing the work to build and bring God's kingdom here. Now the praise band this morning indulged my request to sing this song so that we might use it in worship together, that we might lift our spirits together as we hear this song sung. And I want to invite you, when you hear the words, we are the church, to hear in your heart, we are Willow Hill. Because really, this song is about us, friends. We are the church. We are Willow Hill, and we are God's hope on earth. One, two. Come set your rule and Thank you. 
Oh, God is so good to us, and we are so blessed to be able to build his kingdom in this world, and I am so looking forward to doing that with you, Willow Hill, in the coming weeks and months and years. I want to remind you that starting next Sunday, we are going to have our outdoor worship gatherings every week on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. out in the backyard. Uh, bring your lawn chairs, bring bug spray. And for next week, please bring uh, any elements that you would like to use for communion. Bread, crackers, cookies, we'll take whatever you got. And uh, bring a drink, uh, juice or coffee, whatever you want to use, and we will celebrate Holy Communion together next week. I am so looking forward to that. And if you are able to be there, we would love to see you. If you're not comfortable or you're not able to be there, we will still be offering services online, 10 a.m. on Facebook, and we'll have that posted to YouTube as well. So we hope to engage with you in worship next week. We're looking forward to it. Well, this worship service has ended, but your life in Christ goes on and on. May your peace be so real and your joy so evident that all who see you come to know God. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. Please enjoy this special message from Pastor Nicole about our upcoming sermon series. You know, sometimes I walk around this place and I still cannot believe that my life has led me to this point. There are days when I feel completely unqualified to do the work that God has asked me to do. But when I feel like that, I look back at scripture and I see that God has been calling people who were wildly unqualified since the beginning of time. And over and over again, those people are able to live out that calling that God has placed on their life. And that really helps me remember and look back in my life to see that God has done the same with me. God has taken me on a path that has led me here. He's never left me. He's been with me the whole time. And even though maybe I felt and really was unqualified when that call came in the beginning, he has equipped me along the way. If you've been called to do something or asked to do something that you just felt unqualified for, you are in good company. Well, we want you to join us in September for a new sermon series where we'll be looking at some biblical characters who were unqualified for the work that God was calling them to do, but God was with them and they were able to accomplish it in extraordinary ways. And I think it will help all of us realize that God will help us even if we feel unqualified. In addition to our regular online worship service at 10 a.m., next Sunday we'll begin our weekly outdoor worship services at 9 a.m. Join us next week, bring a lawn chair, mask, and communion elements as we worship the Lord together in person. Please check the FAQ in the coming events for more information. We are still looking for volunteers to assist at the outdoor worship services. Please email Lee Hager if you are able to join the outdoor worship team. There are still a few upcoming Getting Acquainted with Pastor Nicole gatherings. You may sign up in the link in the video's description or call the office with the date and time you'd like to attend. The prison ministry continues to search for individuals to become pen pals with inmates at the Peking Correctional Facility. The pandemic has caused increased restrictions in contact with the outside world, and hearing from a friendly pen pal could make a world of difference. Contact Howard Woolard if you're interested. College students and military personnel, your church family would love to stay in touch with you. Please provide your address to the church office. For prayer concerns, contact Gina Hewlett. For pastoral care needs, contact Pastor Nicole Cox. Staff contact information can be found on our website. If you enjoyed today's worship service, please consider liking the video and subscribing to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on our latest worship videos. Thank you and have a blessed day.